walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never felt me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never felt me yet Oh, oh your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never felt me yet And you never will Oh, I know I know the night won't last And my heart will sing your praise
we get going here, a few Zoom tips, which I'm sure, you know, this has to be your first Zoom call of 2020, right? But keep your camera on because we want to see you. We want other people to see you, but keep your microphone off unless we tell you to unmute. And there's going to be some times throughout the night that we are going to want to hear from you. And also make sure to use the chat. We want to hear from you. In fact, let's use the chat right now. If it was a movie, what would it be? What, uh, what would you say? Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. That is good. That is good. <laughs> yes, Ryan, appropriate names only, okay? There are children on, okay? I'm watching you. Um, oh, by the way, this is Faith. I know most of you know me, I'm Amanda, one of the pastors at Mosaic, and Faith has been with us for the last few months caring for our kids, which has just been awesome. And we're actually streaming this tonight from their house in Jersey. And it's like a house, you guys. It's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. And uh, so we're so grateful for them and the way that they have yeah, provided for it. Also, reminder, get out your snacks. You guys should have gotten these amazing packages. If you haven't, like as in, if you registered a little bit late, it may kill um, the next day, enjoy the snacks, make sure you grab your drinks, and what else do we have? Something very special. Oh yeah, we have some giveaways tonight, and so hopefully you have dressed to impress for best dress as well as best background, and there's also going to be a competition that happens in a little bit, so yeah, get ready <laughs> for that. Um, I shouldn't have eaten caramel corn because now it's in my teeth. It's all good. Um, <laughs> But here's the deal, you guys. Tonight is a really special night for us, and we are so, so honored that you have joined us. We know that Zoom kind of sucks. Um, we are not surprised by that. But the fact that you would spend a Sunday night with us means so much. And so we want, there's, the reality is there's people from all over here. And so we want to take a moment and kind of find out who's here and how you're coming tonight. Yes. So we are going to take a poll right now because you guys already know who we are. But now we want to know who you are. So let's take a poll. So the first question is, let's wait for the poll to go up. Is it up? It's up. Oh, it's oh, up. It's up. Okay. okay, we can't see okay. it. We can't see it. All right, it is. Okay. So the first question should be, who is in the Zoom? No, I mean, how do you, you know? know about Mosaic? Oh, how do you know about Mosaic? How do you know about Do it? Ten. All right, and it's gonna close in five, four, three, two, one, and show us the results, Liam. Liam is our technical guru tonight, by the way. The handsome guy with the bow tie there, without the headphones on. That one. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Um, okay. So that I know the answer to the poll, but we don't, which is like the ironic part about all this. Um, second question, what are you wearing? How are you coming tonight? Again, keep it appropriate. We know that most of you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm already up top. The options should be there. Ready? And it's gonna close in five, four, three, two, one. Liam, show us the results. And then lastly, a question. Right, top, PJ's on the bottom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. That's the way to roll. All right. And the last question is tonight, what are you hoping for? What are you hoping God will do for today? All right. Let's see the answers. Yes, I love it. I'm seeing smiles. So I have a feeling it's a good answer. <laughs> you can only find out through Dan who's <laughs> sitting over there. But the reality is this is one of those times that us being virtual, it's actually to all of our benefit tonight as we have people who are joining us from California, from Chicago, from Ohio, from Detroit, and of course, New York City. So glad that people who have been supporting this ministry for years, you're actually getting to see some of the faces of the people that you have been praying for and caring for for years. And so, yeah, we just want to say thank you. 
we're going to be celebrating tonight. It's our kind of family priorities. These are the things that we feel that God has given to us, the way that we sort of orient the ministry that we do here in New York City around. So you're going to be hearing about those things, and we're also going to give you a glimpse about our end-of-year financial campaign, where um, we're not, this isn't a telethon, okay? You already got all the snacks and things you're going to get. All right, so it's not if you send in this much money, that's not what's happening. But instead, as we are hoping to raise $100,000 between now and mid-January, uh, which seems ridiculous and audacious to even say that out loud, we're just asking that you would listen, that you would pray. And if God says nothing, okay, he says nothing. But if he invites you to join with us financially in what it is that he's doing in New York City, we would hope that you would be obedient to his call. And so again, it's not a telethon tonight. Don't be feeling like there's any pressure tonight. We just hope that you get to hear what it is that God's been up to. And so we're going to start off by spending some time in worship with our team. So our team is going to sing a song called Promises. But during this time, you could worship along. But we also invite you to just use the chat and please just share with us all the beautiful things that God has done for you this year. We just want to share in that blessing in this time. And before we get into our beautiful song done by Josh and Beta, I'm going to read Psalm 34. And that has been an anthem for our community this year. So Psalm 34, it says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the one who takes refuge in him. Amen.
Well, Beta and Josh, I want to thank you. Um, that really, Faith said it, but that song has been an anthem for us. In a season where we have lost a lot of people, um, people that have moved out of the city, uh, people that have passed away, um, who we didn't have much closure with. Um, we, there's been a lot of grief and loss, and I know for you at home as well, uh, that has been the case. And so I want you to know uh, the Sadlers, um, we're standing with you. We're praying with you and we're for you. Um, we're thinking about you often. And that's one of the reasons that that song has been sung again and again and again in our different communities. Um, just another note about that song. How crazy was it that Josh was actually playing the keyboard and the drums at the same time? Dude, it's amazing. Um, but it's to be with you. Um, I miss so many of you that I was seeing over there on the Zoom. Uh, here's what we do at the end of the year. Uh, each year, the last six years that we've had churches in New York City, what we do is we redefine and clarify our family priorities. Uh, the nations, the neighborhood, next generation, and new churches. And we do that for our core communities and for our ministry partners around the world for one specific reason. Um, because we want to reorient all of who we are around those and actually be vulnerable enough and risk enough to go, God, how might we reorient our lives and our loves around you? And so for a lot of our Mosaic communities in New York, this is our chance to kind of go, you know what? Um, we do want to depend fully on God. And so we, we ask God, what would you have us give above and beyond? And as Amanda said, we're trying to raise a bunch of money for those different initiatives that I just talk to you about nations next gen neighborhood new churches a twenty thousand dollar matching gift and so I want you to know as i follow up with so many of you over the next few weeks um every gift up to twenty thousand dollars is going to be matched dollar for dollar and so we're already celebrating uh, that, that we're already underway um but let me just walk you through a couple of those quick quickly uh the first one being nations and this is going to sound a bit cryptic cryptic but but uh i want to let you in on as much as i can um, I have been working uh, hand in hand with one of our supporting networks called Global for the last year and a half. Uh, Global is a network of pastors all around the United States. But one of the things that we specialize in is as Christian Jesus following pastors, we work alongside imams and we work alongside rabbis. Um, and we go to different countries that are uh, oppressive toward religion, not just Christianity, but religion as a whole. And we advocate for religious freedom. We really believe that walking alongside those with different worldviews and advocating for their flourishing, not just our own, is one of the best ways to go. This is who Jesus is. He cares about you, regardless of whether or not you're ever going to step in our church. And so over this next year, and, and I'm speaking specifically to our Mosaic people that are in New York City, we have the opportunity to work hand in hand with the government of a country in the East that has largely been oppressive to uh, religion and freedom of religion in decades past. In fact, over the next month or so, you will be introduced to the ambassador of their country in the United States, who has given us permission to galvanize and mobilize all of our doctors and researchers and businessmen and women and uh, teachers and those in social services and actually move them to this country where we can work uh, for short periods of time with their people as well. In the, in, in the meantime, advocating for religious freedom as, as I travel there with different imams and different rabbis. And so again, I think the story in, in America for, for decades now has been we, we long for not religious freedom, but a lot of religious power. We wanna keep our power as Christians. And for us, we're just saying, you know what, let's actually make this about religious freedom. Let's, let's befriend and care for and, and seek the flourishing of our Muslim neighbors and our, and our Jewish neighbors so that at the end of the day, my Muslim neighbor is actually glad that I'm following Jesus because it means flourishing for themselves. This is the best witness we have. And so uh, well, more info will come out about that. But let me move quickly to the priority, the family priority of neighborhoods. Um, one of the things that we love is the Gospel of John, one of those first few chapters where Eugene Peterson in his version of the message says, flesh and he moved into the neighborhood. He became embedded in the neighborhood as Jesus. If you want to know what God looks like, we look to Jesus. If you want to know what God values, we look to Jesus. And Jesus was deeply embedded in his local vicinity. He celebrated with his local vicinity when they celebrated. He grieved and wept with them when they wept. And so that has been a name of every one of our churches in New York City. It's been a name for Amanda and I and our different pastors where we care deeply about being fully present in the neighborhoods that we find ourselves in. 
And so over a year ago now, many of you on this call actually helped uh, us get some actual space, physical space in New York City that we now call the Mosaic Community Center. And if you know New York City, you know physical space is stupid expensive. And so the fact that we have some small square footage in West Queens is a big deal. And for the past year, Michigan is a place for community development programming and hanging out with kids and teens, forming our core team for our second church plant that launched a, a bit ago. Uh, but as of late, as pandemic hit, and as food insecurity skyrocketed in West Queens, it has become a full-on food distribution center. And we wanted to show you just a small glimpse of what that has looked like for the last eight months. Hola a todos. Uh, estamos aquí hoy recibiendo un truck con más de 24 paletas que serán distribuidas algunas desde el center, otras por otros centros y por otras iglesias que están sirviendo a sus comunidades. Fueron nueve toneladas que repartimos entre cinco dispensos en Nueva York. Y hoy fue un día muy emocionado porque había como unos 20 voluntarios de todo Sunnyside que estaba ayudando. Y estoy muy orgulloso que hay gente que está ayudando a nosotros a ayudar a la comunidad. Gracias. because there has been some volunteers and leaders that have been serving like crazy. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. <clears throat> Before I hand it off to Sophie and you hear some of the really tangible, practical boots on the ground stuff that's been happening in West Queens, um, I want you to get your noisemakers out, okay? Because there will be a moment where we unmute this thing and for some specific people on this call that have been caring for neighbors like nobody's business, we are just gonna hold them in high regard and scream like maniacs because of all they've been doing. But first, I, I want to make sure that you are introduced to Sophie. Sophie Moncayo works alongside Ruth Dia. Uh, Ruth is one of our pastoras uh, in West Queens, helps lead the Mosaic Latino congregation. And Sophie Moncayo has been catalytic in their team development at the Mosaic Community Center. And so Sophie, can you give us just a, a few uh, pieces of info that help us see what's been happening in, uh, in West Queens through the Community Center? Um, hi, everyone. Um, as Pastor Dan mentioned, I've been uh, participating or involved in the uh, Mosaic Community Center with uh, Pastora Ruth um, from Mosaic Latino. It's It's been a huge privilege. It's also huge challenges. Um, that video you saw was from September, uh, where we were serving about about approximately 400 people three times a week, so or 400 families three times a week. That was September. As of last week, we... Um, served twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. And as of last week, September uh, was about 1,200 in one week. Uh, last week in two days, it was almost 1,800. Um, so, so the need is, is really huge. Um, if, if we think about the totals, uh, it, it's pretty daunting. We were, we were putting this together and we, we have distributed close to um, somewhere between 35,000 and 40,000 grocery baskets let's say or bags or boxes um, but that's only directly through like from the center to a person um, it, in addition to that it's been incredible um, I think a lot of people don't know how how it happened and when people ask us we always say you know well how do you do it and how do you get all this stuff and we say you know we pray and we trust um, because now we're also distributing uh, if if and this is a rough estimate, it's been at least another 90,000 sets of, let's say, grocery packages um, 
to other that we share with other pantries. And so that's that's not possible unless you have some pretty amazing volunteers. And you know, we've been we we live in a great community, but there's just the people that that we really want to um, want to give a huge thank you to. And and Lucy Lucy Bodden, who's on here, she she she's been amazing. She's not even from this community. She used to be. She's not from it now, but um, she still she travels every day to to come in. Um, Pete Pete, who's been amazing. We have Doug and Nancy Condon, uh, Dana. Uh, Danielle and Jane, of course, who lives right around the corner, always helping us. Um, and then we have Alex, who's an amazing, amazing young person who, you know, it's just been great. So I really, really want to give them a, a huge, huge round of applause, noisemakers, just so that they know that, that this is impossible without them and that they're appreciated. I'm going to ask everyone to just unmute yourself. <laughs> Okay, this one, and we're going to just honor the crap out of these volunteers because they're the best. That is so good. One, two, three. closer quarters and there's dogs walking around my feet right now 
Um, so this is a this is a miracle that we've gotten this far. Yes. With. Um, hey, one of the things we say at Mosaic very often is that the gospel reaches you on its way to someone else. Uh, that we exist for the sake of others. This is why we do what we do. Um, it is always about inviting people with us as we join Jesus in the renewal of all things. And so what you're about to see is some of my friends um, who I really believe in. Uh, Amanda and I have a kindred spirit with these folks and want to both encourage them, empower them, and see them continue to call people into the mission uh, of following Jesus. And so watch this. We moved to the city of New York about eight years ago from Detroit, uh, where we were born and raised. And we did so to start our first church here in the city. And within the first few years of that first church, if not the first few months, we started to see that we had arrived at a different moment in time a very specific moment in time that demanded a specific type of church. Yeah, the individualism of New York City and really most global cities, it's pretty staggering to watch. More than ever before in our history, we are making decisions based on our needs, our preferences, our wants and our desires. And so that makes for relationships and churches and really everything to be very transactional. As long as this is working out for me, I'm around. But as soon as something costs too much or desires too much for me, I'm going to move on. Yeah. We have this thing in New York, we call it the New York goodbye, where if you're with somebody you've potentially spent the week with and the train pulls up to the subway platform, there is no elongated goodbye. There's no sentimental feelings. You are out and you are out fast so that you can catch that train. And this is what often relationships feel like in the city here, where as soon as a new job comes along in a different city, where as soon as someone is too tired of trying to make it a, a go at living in the city, as soon as a, a neighborhood gets too expensive or another one gets a little bit nicer or cheaper, people are out and they're out fast, which is sad, not just for them, but for their spiritual transformation. You need a, a deep commitment to a, an elongated community to really experience the grace and mercy Jesus longs for. Yeah, and this is where Ephesians 1 comes in. And it's Paul's theology of adoption, this adoption theology where we are sons and daughters and brothers and sisters in Christ. And it has this familial language where we're calling the church not to just be this petty religious place, but really a new family and a family that sticks together. Yeah. One of our mentors says it this way. He says, Jesus left his family to create family for people that don't have it. And that's what we believe the church is supposed to be, not just an institution, but an extended family that is committed to one another. And we believe that it's that type of church that's needed right now. As individualism is at its peak, churches need to learn how to function like that extended family. But what's interesting is our church didn't just start to function like that extended family for people that don't have it. Uh, it then was started in a very diverse context. Uh, in fact, Mosaic Roosevelt Island, that first church we started, is now home to over 40 different countries of origin. Mm -hmm. And it's messy. <laughs> it sure it's is. It's difficult, especially as here we are in one of the most polarizing times, at least in my lifetime, and I'm sure many other people's lifetime. But there's something so amazing when we get to see people who are coming from all different backgrounds, different upbringings, different tribes, different tongues, come together and listen to one another and learn from one another and empathize with one another, all because of the grace and mercy of Jesus. This is what Paul talks about in Ephesians 2, that his purpose, God's purpose was to create in himself one new humanity from the two, this making peace, this one new body reconciling people to each other and to himself. Yeah. And so we've arrived at this moment where we don't just sense that the church is supposed to function like extended family in the midst of individuality, but we also believe in this new humanity thing that Jesus and Paul speak of, yeah. that we're supposed to be churches that function like a new diverse community and humanity in the context of this serious polarity. And so in this season, we get to do that. We get to acknowledge that, that the Spirit has, has birthed a specific type of church for a specific moment. And we are mobilizing people and resources, not to just create and cultivate those churches here in the city, but to help catalyze these types of churches where we find brothers and sisters who we love and share a kindred spirit with do the same in their cities across the United States and hopefully across the world. And so in this season, we have sensed 
God asking us to both continue the ministry that we've been doing here, but also to help catalyze and support this specific type of church for this specific moment in history. Hi, what's going on? I'm Chris. And I'm Sarah. And we're the Griffiths, and we are starting a church in Chicago called Rhythm. When Sarah and I first met, one of the very first conversations we had, it was a first date, and you know, we were really excited and we we're talking about all of our hopes and dreams and all of that. And I just felt really compelled to tell her the dream that God had put on my heart from a young age, and that was to be a pastor. That was to start a life-giving church. It was a great, great, great uh, confirmation for me to hear that God had led her and put on her heart to do the exact same thing. About a year ago, we decided that we were gonna step out and start a church. We are Simone and Ruth Padilla. We are from Venezuela originally. We are here from Plant the Church in New York City. Starting the 2012, uh, we take a time to pray and, uh, and fasting and, and looking God will for the next years. And, and we had that deep feeling in our heart that eventually we're going to finish a planting and pastoring churches in New York. And that was pretty much because we have this uh, deep call to, to reach the Latin American countries and the Latino countries. And we realized that the best place to, to reach that countries is uh, New York City. There are bridges between uh, New York and the different Latino countries. Uh, New York is one of the biggest cities for Latinos in the U.S. And being here, planting a church here, is a, is a beautiful way to connect with the families. My name is Ines Velasquez McBride, and I'm one of the co-lead pastors here at the church we hope for. My name is Bobby Harrison, and I'm one of the co-lead pastors of this church alongside my Latina hermana and compañera. I think in the first church that I helped uh, plan, the heart for racial reconciliation was very alive and beating. The second church where I met Bobby, uh, I think I, the church helped me be confused about my calling mm. as, a, as a female mm. pastora, you know, third generation pastor, but first female pastor. They wanted to advance the conversation on reconciliation, on race, but not gender. Mm -hmm. And we saw the importance mm -hmm. and the critical importance of that intersectionality. And so God did place a dream and they said, what, it, what would it look mm -hmm. like for an embodiment of a more robust reconciliation, one that imitates the life and ministry and love and justice and mercy of Jesus, mm -hmm. the way Jesus embodied reconciliation, the way Jesus lived the ethics of mm -hmm. the kingdom, the way he always was welcoming and including the marginalized, the way he treated and elevated and amplified the voices of women. One of the big problems we see here in Chicago is just the segregation that exists among nationalities, among in cultures and communities. In fact, Chicago is the fifth most segregated city in all of America. And we believe we've been uniquely called and created to help solve that problem. We want people from every background, from every nationality, from every culture. Uh, we want to reach them. And not only do we want to reach them, we want them to feel comfortable with us, comfortable with our team, comfortable with a community, that they can be part of a family yeah, um, and, not, so and not feel segregated. Por Dios también abrió camino para nosotros, de manera que en el año 2016 eh, tuvimos que venir o vinimos de vacaciones a Estados Unidos y um, estando aquí ya no pudimos volver a casa por razones políticas, eh, pero sin embargo entendimos que, que era el momento que Dios estaba preparando para cumplir la palabra que había puesto en nuestro corazón. Eh, tenemos ya cuatro años en Estados Unidos y ha sido una hermosa experiencia poder eh, prepararnos para servir en este país, para servir en medio de tantas culturas, en medio de mucha gente que aunque también habla nuestro idioma, eh, puede ser totalmente diferente en sus países. Estamos hablando de la cantidad de países representados en esta ciudad eh, latinoamericanos y estamos felices de poder conocerlos y contextualizarnos. I think when you think about a living text like the Bible, we can also live into the living text of our world today. And just as we're supposed to do that interpretive, what was going on in the culture of that day? What does this really mean? I think we began to do that for our own world and our own culture. And we began to look at ourselves both in the mirror and at one another and go, we are two of the most polarized bodies in our country today. What would it represent of the kingdom of God for us to come together, male and female, brown and white, born and raised U.S. citizen, a Latina immigrant. Yeah. And what would it look like for us to share leadership? And could that be an expression of shalom? Uh, shalom being the embodiment of this shared access to power, shared access to resources, shared access to goodness. We say that the power we possess is the power to share and that we can live into that together side by side. And in so doing, 
be an answer to Jesus' prayer in John 17, when he prays for oneness, a oneness that recognizes the beauty of diversity and invites unity in the midst of that, not trying to squash that, but instead trying to celebrate that. In a culture right now where there's so much a push for individuality, um, how can we create something that actually creates this idea of a family where yeah. people uh, from far and wide, regardless of their background or, or nationalities or beliefs, they can come and experience the real Jesus. And I think that um, through this avenue of starting a local church, that we can help people find rhythm. I don't know about you, but it gets me excited to hear from these people across the country where God is really birthing that same vision in those people that he has in us. And so we, we know and acknowledge there are tons of different churches out there, great churches around the country, around the world. And yet time and time again, we have sensed that the Holy Spirit is going, yes, but for you, this is a specific moment that we've never seen and it demands something new, a different type of church. A church that doesn't just function as a large institution, but like a family among a culture of individuality and like a new humanity, diverse in its parts, diverse in its makeup among a culture of polarity. And so we're inviting you to join us as we join what the Spirit is doing in us and through us around the world. Well, we are, we are ending our time together uh, tonight. And we want to say thank you. Come on in here. Um, in 2021, we'll be officially launching what we are calling the Mosaic Collective, which is composed of our Mosaic churches in New York City and Mosaic Latino that you saw highlighted with Pastor Simone and Pastor Ruth, but also like-minded churches, um, like the, the church we hope for uh, in, in L.A. Uh, with Pastor Inez and Bobby Harrison, um, as well as uh, Chris and Sarah uh, in Chicago. And so we, we have just sensed this is a moment for a specific type of church. And we want to do everything we can to, to mobilize the resources and the energy and the emotion that we have um, to help people with that heart. Um, and so 60% of that $100,000 will be going to churches like that, the churches that we just highlighted, uh, as well as the, the youth and the next gen ministry that we do in a city through Young Life. Um, in addition um, to, what am I missing? Oh, the community, uh, the community center and yeah, food distribution, which is a massive part, part of this in their lungs. And so again, there's a 20th. Um, I will follow up with all of you. I know, I know most of you very well. And so I'll be following up in the next few weeks, but we'll drop the link um, for giving. Is it already dropped in there? It's like with simultaneous. Nice. We have such tech skills. Uh, right so, there. so we will, uh, <laughs> that link for giving, you're going to want to find the end of year tab that you can uh, connect to that will make sure that dollar for dollar is matched. Um, but we want to pray for you tonight to end our time. Yeah. Um, we'll pray for you. And then we're going to send you off with just a big goodbye as well as uh, our Mosaic Latino um, Church has put together a piece for one of their virtual services that they've been doing. Um, and you can, you can choose to stay and listen to it, see what the Mosaic Latino uh, experience feels like, um, or you so can, great. it is great. I love these people. Um, or, uh, or you can go and have a wonderful rest of the night. So uh, kids, come here. Come here, come um, I, it wasn't like a telethon until I just brought a hundred kids out here with me. Uh, <laughs> Then it is. Here's Judah. Judah just turned five uh, two days ago. He's wearing an LA Rams jersey. I don't know why he likes the Rams, but he likes the Rams. There's no connection um, to the Rams, but here he is. And so let us uh, pray for you tonight. Lord, um, would you be with these friends and family from around the world tonight? Would you let them know in the midst of chaos, where so many of us are just hitting the wall and are tired and are exhausted and disoriented, let them know how much you love them. Let them know how much we love them. Uh, we are for them, that we are interceding for them, that we are cheering them on. And let them truly, truly experience the goodness of your love. We are grateful for you, Lord. We are thankful for your love. And it is in your precious and holy name that we pray these things. All as people said. Amen. Amen. So, Sadler, here's your chance. And for all these people that have been caring for us and praying for us from a distance, you want to cheer for them with your noisemakers? On three. One, two, three. <laughs>
cambiando está tu espíritu está aquí es evidente tu mover tu espíritu está
speak.